very good evening to you. This is an English edition of Dalsan TV, Somalia's premier TV station. My name is Abdurza Kali and let's have a look at some of our top stories. Somalia's Senate passes National Idea Registration Bill. Hodan District Commissioner opens a new road and demolishes illegal buildings. Somalia urges the UK government to convince United Nations to lift the arms embargo. And the Somali government has added the communication authorities to register SIM cards of their clients. A very good evening to you. My name is Abdulza Kali. Our news just in. The second deputy commissioner of Bordobo district in Gedo, No Hassan Daoud, along with two others, including his son, were injured in an explosion at his home. The, the perpetrators of the attack remain unknown, but the district commissioner has blamed it to the Al Shabaab group. Now, Somalia has urged the UK government to help the nation to convince UN to lift the decades long arms embargo to Somalia. On Saturday, Somalia's Defense Minister Abdul Qadir Mohamed Noor Jama has held, and met, has held talks and met with. Deputy Ambassador of the United Kingdom to Somalia. Somalia has urged the UK government to help the nation convince the United Nations to leave the decades-long arms embargo on Somalia. On Saturday, Somalia's Defense Minister Abdul Qadir Mohamed Noor held talks with the Deputy Ambassador of the United Kingdom to Somalia, Ed Barnett. They also discussed the importance of lifting of the arms embargo and its importance as we intensify the operations to eradicate the Kawarij al-Shabaab. They discussed how to enhance the current support provided to the Somali National Army in the fight against terrorism and the importance of enhancing their capacity and capabilities to combat Al-Shabaab terrorists. Somalia has lately been raising the tempo against Al-Shabaab, cheering on the village vigilantes to fight alongside the Somalia National Army. Somalia has lately been raising the tempo against Shabaab cheering on the village vigilantes to fight alongside the Somalia National Army while banning Shabaab narratives from the media and freezing bank accounts linked to the militant group. But the group has often responded with vengeance, targeting government offices, civil servants, and civilian areas with explosives to avenge the lost territory. The Somali government has been trying to convince the United Nations to completely lift the ends embargo by the end of this year. In November, the United Nations Security Council extended the ends embargo until November next year, arguing that Shabab was still a threat to the country. Now, the Somalia Senate House of the Federal Parliament has on Saturday passed the National Identification and Registration Bill paving way for the rollout of national IDs to Somalis for the first time in three decades. The Senate has passed the National Identification and Registration Bill on Saturday, paving the way for Somalis to receive national ID cards for the first time in more than three decades. Interior Minister Ahmed Fikri praised the bill's passage, saying it was critical in ensuring Somalis now have IDs. He also stated that the law will address the issue of identity, security and financial transactions, and business registrations, among other areas that require identification. He added the law will also resolve the challenge of identity, security, financial transactions and business registration among other areas which require identification. The law now heads to the president for signature. Somalia signed $10 million agreement with Pakistan in 2018 for the grant of and technical assistance for the development of Somalia's national identification system. The legal age for one to acquire an ID in Somalia is 15. There are three steps to the process. First, one has to get a letter from the district commissioner's office that confirms that they are Somali and are from the particular area. They then go to Criminal Investigations Department, CID, to have a criminal background check conducted and seek clearance. Now, the Somali government has urged the telecommunication companies to register their clients in a move that makes the SIM card registration compulsory for the first time in decades. The Somalia government has directed the country's telecommunication companies to register the SIM cards of their clients, a move that makes the SIM card registration compulsory for the first time in decades. 
The country's national communications authority has instructed the companies to adhere to a list of decisions issued by the National Anti-Money Laundering and Combating the Financing of the Terrorism. The regulatory body has given the companies an ultimatum of weeks to implement the directives, saying the orders should be implemented as soon as, as possible. The National Communication Authority has ordered to obtain licenses from the Central Bank of Somalia for their mobile money services. The regulatory directed the companies to ensure that their mobile money services on their network and the mobile virtual network operators comply with the technical and operational guidelines set forth by the Central Bank and the decisions of the Executive Committee of the National Anti-Money Laundering and Combating the Financing of Terrorism. Mobile phone penetration in Somalia is high. It's estimated that 90% of the Somalis have access to a mobile phone, while 70% of the Somalis have access to 4G coverage. Every month, Somalis conduct over 155 million transactions worth $2.7 billion. Only 6% now use the cash. Now, Holland District, which is considered to be the most populous district among 17 districts in Mogadishu has hit headlines of the news waves for all reasons, the, starting from Al Shabaab ambush, political reasons, and protest, among others. Hodan District administration, with the help of local forces, have established new roads and demolished buildings deemed to be structured in grey areas in October Village, Hodan District, Benadi region. Northern District, which is considered to be the most populous among the 17 districts, has hit headlines of the news waves for all reasons, starting from Al Shabaab ambush, political assassinations, public protests, among others. Land and property ownership in Mogadishu remains an emotive and complex issue dating back to the collapse of the government in 1991. Northern District Commissioner highlighted that his administration is geared to ensure all roads in the locality are passable. Moreover, he sent a stern warning to the owners of the buildings anchored in public land, such as roads, that if they do not implement the management's warning, they will face the same fate. The leader voiced that the directive will decongest the district and even ease path for firefighters who have an Achillean task in responding to emergencies due to the watertight nature of the roads. Speaking to the press, the commissioner emphasized that they are more than ready to implement the city's mayor directives for the good of the public. Thank you so much for watching Dalsan TV. My name is Abdul Zakali. Have a lovely evening.